Philadelphia is home to some of the most interesting buildings in the country. The city has Independence Hall, which is certainly one of the most significant buildings in the whole nation and arguably the world. There is also the towering Comcast Technology Center, which as a smart building is one of the country's most technologically advanced skyscrapers. But in my opinion, Philadelphia's most interesting building lies at the very center of Center City, the Philadelphia City Hall. What makes it the most interesting building in the city of brotherly love? Let's find out. Few buildings in the world have as many records and superlatives as Philadelphia's City Hall. The story of the building, however, starts with the founder of Pennsylvania, William Penn, who set aside a square for a public building in the center of his original plans for the city. Due to most of the city developing near the Delaware River, it took 200 years though before the city hall was finally built there. Construction began in 1871 and was overseen by architect John MacArthur Jr. It was designed to be the world's tallest building, but due to construction taking a whopping 30 years, it was surpassed by the Washington Monument and the Eiffel Tower before it would get the chance to make that claim. Upon completion though, it could claim the title of world's tallest habitable building, making it the first non-religious building in the world to have this distinction. Although it can no longer claim that title, the height record that it holds that I happen to find most fascinating is that it's the tallest building in the world without a steel frame. And I don't think that record is going to be beaten anytime soon. This 548 foot tall building is comparable to Seattle's Space Needle in height if you don't count its spire, yet it's built with just granite and brick, which is incredible to me. With 14 and a half acres of floor space, it is larger than the US Capitol building and is the largest municipal building in the world. The exterior of the massive building is faced with marble and is designed in the French Second Empire style. Alexander Milne Calder designed 250 sculptures on and within the building. One of those is the giant statue of the father of Philadelphia, William Penn, which stands at the top of the tower. The statue is 37 feet tall, which for context is taller than the height of an Olympic high dive. And in case you weren't already impressed enough with all of the superlatives connected to this building, the statue is the largest statue atop a building in the entire world. The fact that a giant 53,000 pound statue is sitting atop a building without a steel frame didn't make you nervous. Prior to COVID, you could actually go up to an observation deck just below the statue to get a 360 degree view of Philadelphia. Below the observation deck on the tower is a clock face on each side, which has a diameter of 26 feet, making it about 3 feet larger in diameter than the clock face on London's Big Ben. Unbelievably, in the 1950s, the city council considered tearing down the Philadelphia City Hall. Fortunately though, they found that the cost to tear down the masonry building would have bankrupted the city. Thank goodness because tearing down a building like this would have been a tragedy in my opinion. Philadelphia City Hall has obviously had a profound impact on the skyline of the city and perhaps even on the fate of Philly's sports teams. For decades, there was a gentleman's agreement that no building should be built taller than William Penn's hat, keeping Philadelphia's skyline relatively flat until the agreement was broken in 1984 when One Liberty Place was built. The building is 945 feet tall, making it the first building in Philadelphia taller than the City Hall. This had some serious consequences in the minds of superstitious Philly sports fans because although several Philly sports teams made it to their respective championships over the next 20 years, no team won. They called this the curse of Billy Penn. It wasn't until the Comcast Center was completed and an iron worker put a small statue of William Penn on the highest beam that the curse seemed to be broken and the Phillies won the World Series the following year. And then when the Comcast Tower was surpassed by the Comcast Technology Center, an iron worker put another William Penn statue on the last beam a month before the 2017 Super Bowl, when the Eagles upset the Patriots. So there may have been something to this curse after all. Well, that wraps up my video about the Philadelphia City Hall. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and check out some of my other videos about cities. Thanks for watching.